Hello, this is the TI-84 guy and I'm back. Um, I'm back with a, another video that demonstrates a program that I've written called ASA Query. Uh, it's basically a program that handles arithmetic sequences, series, geometric sequences and series. And it's perfect for the uh, SAT uh, Math Level 1 and Level 2 exam. It's also great for the SAT and it's also um, good for the ACT exam as well. Um, I created an exam, I created a, um, a video earlier where I did some problems where I took them um, directly from the, the these books and there are potentially some copyright issues so I wanted to um, create another video in which uh, I basically created my own programs or my own problems to demonstrate kind of the flexibility of the the program uh, also, I wanted to uh, make sure um, that everyone understands that these problems are basically based on the kinds of questions that you would see on these exams. Um, so um, without further ado, I'm just going to kind of jump in and start going. Um, uh, addi uh, additionally, I, I wanted to create a series of videos uh, instead of being this one block of uh, maybe 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, I thought I'd create a series of um, maybe three videos that are about 10 to 15 minutes apiece and basically demonstrates um, the program in action, kind of some of the things you, you can do with it. So um, I'm going to create a series of three videos and so just stay tuned for those. So um, we'll just jump into this one. Um, the very first one that we're doing here um, is... Um, it says if the tenth tenth term of an arithmetic sequence is a negative nine, and the twenty first term is a negative fifty three, what is the sixth term of the sequence? Okay, that's a pretty straightforward question. Um, no real bells and whistles. It's pretty straightforward. Um, so what I would do is I would use the AC Query program. All right, uh, press enter, and then the very first prompt that you're going to get is going to ask you, does this sequence have any variables in it. This one does not. It just has numbers. So you would choose option uh, one. Um, and then uh, we know this, that it's an arithmetic sequence, so we would choose the first um, the first option. And then it's going to ask you for the term. So the, the we know that the tenth term is a negative nine. We also know that the twenty-first term is um, a negative fifty-three. So the program's going to prompt you and say, okay, what term do you want to know the value for? So we're going to put in 6 since we want to know the 6th term and press enter. And it tells us that the value of the 6th term is 7. So this one would be uh, D. Okay, next one. Um, similar arithmetic sequence question. It says an arithmetic sequence has a 10th has a term of 25 and a 14th term of 41. Find the common difference. Uh, one of the things I wanted to say is this. First of all, um, arithmetic sequences are um, also linear functions. So basically the things that you would use for linear functions you can also use for arithmetic sequence. Um, and when you're looking for the common difference, essentially what you're looking for is the slope of, of a line. So um, we can use this program to basically generate the the equation for the arithmetic sequence and then look for the common difference which would be the slope. So let's do that. So press enter again and what we have here is um, no variables. Uh, it's an arithmetic sequence. The tenth term is 25. The fourteenth term is 41. So it says find the common difference. The, the program again is going to ask you what term that we want, do we want. In this case we don't really care so I'll just put one. Uh, but what we're going to do is, if you go to y equals, uh, y equals will always, the program will always put the equation for the sequence, whether it's geometric or arithmetic, into the y1 uh, space. So in this case, the, um, the equation for this sequence is 4x minus 15. So the common difference would be 4. So the answer to this one is 4. Also. If you wanted to see actual values for this, you could use the table and then just look at the values here, 
right? You see first value is a negative 11. We see that the 10th value, if we go down, the 10th value is 25. Uh, the sixth value is nine. So uh, the table is a good thing to use here. Okay, next problem. Next problem um, is uh, a geometric sequence. So let's see here. It says the if the ninth term of a geometric sequence is 864 and the eleventh term is 5184, what is the third term of the sequence? All right, so let's uh, go back to the um, home screen. Uh, we can press enter again, so that's going to bring back the program. Um, it doesn't have any variables, so we're going to choose option one. And then it's gonna, we're going to choose option three now, because it's geometric sequence. So it says that the ninth term has a value of 864. The eleventh term has a value of 5184. And so then it says we're looking for the third term. So the third term would be four. Straightforward, nothing, nothing fancy. Just a basic, uh, basic uh, problem there. Um, all right, let's go to another one. Um, it says at the end of 1990, the population of Agraba was 49,800, and at the end of 1995, basically five years later, the population was only 45,000. Find the approximate rate of decrease per year. Okay, so this is an exponentially declining problem, okay? Um, so we can use the uh, program ASA query and basically um, use the geometric sequence piece to find the exponential function. Um, geometric sequences are, um, are also exponential functions. So we can use this program to actually find the function. Now, um, one of the things that uh, I'm not, I wanted to make sure was clear, in order to generate either arithmetic or geometric sequences, you need to have two points. You need to know the term and you need to know the value. So if you have two terms and two values uh, and the corresponding values, then you can use this program and easily generate the equation, find the term, find the common difference, find the common uh, ratio. Uh, all those things are very easy to find if you know two points. You have to have a minimum of two points. So okay. I want to make sure that's clear. So now let's um, press enter again. Let's go here. We're going to move this up a little bit. Move this over. All right. So it says at the end of 1990, uh, first of all, there's no variables here. Um, and this is a geometric sequence. So at the end of 1990, there are 49,800 people. All right, so that's going to be our initial value. So I'm going to put zero in there. Instead of putting 1990, I'm going to put zero because that's our initial value, initial term. And we're going to put in 49,800, right? And then it says five years later, the population was 45,000. So we're going to put the term, the fifth term, and we're going to put in 45,000, all right? So now it's going to ask us what term do we want. In this case, we really don't want the term. We want to know what, how, how much is it decreasing per year? What's the approximate rate of decrease per year? So um, we can put in one and we see that um, we get a value there. What we really are interested in is the y, the y equals because this calculates the actual formula. And this is the initial value that we would expect, 49,800, and these are a the bunch of zeros. So if we go over, we'll see that this is in, in fact an exponential function. This is times 0.97993. We can keep going, keep going, keep going. There's a bunch of decimals here. Uh, but you see x is raised to the x power, which means it is an exponential exponential function. If we wanted to find the rate of decrease, what we would do is we would go back over here, and as we would expect, this number is less than 1, so it's indicating that it's going to be decreasing. So what we can do is we can go 1 minus 0.9799, I think that's enough digits, so that would be 0.0201. So basically, this 
um, this this city, Agrabah, is declining by 2.01% per year. All right, and the closest choice would be choice C. So that would be your answer for that one. All right, got two more problems and then we're gonna uh, shut it down. All right, first two problems that we did, or the first four that we did were sequences, geometric, arithmetic. Now we wanna look at the series piece, all right? So uh, it says here, find the sum of the first 100 odd numbers. So get out of here. We're going to press enter again. Um, there's no variables. So in this case, we're looking for the first hundred odd integers or numbers. So it's going to be an arithmetic se uh, sequence. Uh, the very first term would be one. The second term would be three, since we're looking for only odd numbers. And then um, it's saying what term? Oops, I should have used the series here. Uh, let me do that again. Uh, press enter. Does it have a variable? No. Actually, you want the series. I went to the sequence. My bad. Uh, arithmetic sequence. First term is 1. Second term is 3. And then the program's going to prompt you and say, okay, what do you want? What do you want me to find? Do you want the sum or do you want the number of terms in the series? What do you want? In this case, we're looking for the sum. So we would choose option one. And then it's going to say, okay, where do we start from and where do we go to? So we begin at one and we want the first hundred. So we would put in a hundred and it tells us that the sum of the first hundred odd integers would be 10,000. All right, so we're done. Um, again, the uh, program will always generate the arithmetic sequence that governs what, whatever is going on. Whether it's a series or, or sequence, it's going to generate uh, the equation for it. Um, all right, so let's do one more, and then we can um, kind of wrap this up. Um, now, it says here, what is the sum of the geometric series 8 Four, 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 half plus dot 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 goes on to infinity. So if you understand geometric series that go on to infinity, you know that this is an infinite geometric series. All right. Um, it's declining by a half. Each term is declining by half and it goes on kind of forever. So it wants to know, okay, what's the sum of that? Um, so again, we'd go here no variables again press one this is a geometric series so we're going to go to option four press enter the first term is eight second term is four okay and then we're looking for the sum all right so we begin at one which is what we expect but now there's no way there's no infinity symbol on this calculator. So the way that I have written this program to understand that we're dealing with an infinite geometric series is if you put in 999 nine, nine in the ending spot, the calculator knows that we're talking about an infinite geometric series. So then it's going to use the appropriate code. And so it says the infinite geometric series has a sum of 16, which would be choice E. All right, so um, that's it for the first part, first video. Uh, and this is kind of the basic stuff that you would see on any kind of arithmetic series or sequence, geometric series or sequence. Um, but the next video uh, will detail the variable part, uh, sequences and series that have variables in it. And then the final video will basically show you different ways that you can use this program to do something that isn't necessarily an arithmetic series or a geometric series. Thank you. Um, if you have any questions, leave a comment. Uh, if you like the video, subscribe. Um, and if you want to get a copy of the video, um, you've got to contact me and we'll try to make some arrangements to kind of make that happen. All right. Um, see ya.